What's up everybody, Steve Daria here. If you've never watched any of my videos, I have been a Florida real estate broker since 2006. I've been a Realtor since 2003. And uh, on our Facebook group as well as YouTube, I've been getting a lot of questions pertaining to um, you know, how to get started in real estate or if you're slow, what you should be doing right now. If you're feeling any kind of dip in the market and things are slow for you, these are the five things that I would do right away. The first thing, is I would start a YouTube channel. I know you might be camera shy and that's okay if you are. You can actually create YouTube videos by just doing a voiceover and you can really you know, fly a drone and have the drone flying around or tour real estate properties and talk about certain subjects, which I'm gonna give you tips on exactly what to talk about to drive traffic to your YouTube channel so you can generate organic leads. Now, I can tell you having two channels, one for Florida as well as uh, my channel, Steve Daria, where I talk about real estate investing, passive income, and, um, and also investing in short-term rental properties, we get a ton of leads from that channel as well as our Florida channel. And um, we've get, gotten so many leads that actually I have to outsource because people are looking all throughout the state of Florida. So we actually set up a uh, team to handle these referrals that we refer out to different agents in different key areas throughout the state of Florida and in some cases even in other states. So we've been generating a lot of organic traffic that way and making good commission dollars from it. So let me go through some of uh, some really um, good titles that you could talk about in a YouTube on your YouTube channel. The first thing would be the cost of living in. Okay, so I'm in Bonita Springs, Florida. So the title would be cost of living in Bonita Springs, Florida. You got to do your research, make sure you have accurate data, put that out as one video on your channel. The second thing would be uh, top five communities to live in Bonita Springs, Florida, or whatever community you or you know whatever city or town you're in. You know this could be um, different towns within the city or different towns within the county. Just basically based on any any particular communities that you guys really enjoy and like in that specific area. Um, where should I move to in Bonita Springs, Florida? That could be another topic comparable to the community one. Uh, a really good one that gets a lot of traffic is uh, pros and cons of living in and then your, your area. Uh, another thing is 10 things you need to know about moving to and then the area. Now, what's cool is, you know, hopefully you took notes on those or just rewatched the video. What's cool is, you know, those five titles that I provide you guys, you guys could utilize those titles over and over and over for all the different suburbs and towns and cities and everything in the area that you guys are working in. The next thing you can do right away that doesn't cost you any money is reach out to your sphere of influence, center of influence. Um, look, I, and a lot of people say this, look, if you're new to real estate, get on the phones, call people and everything else. But I'm gonna give you guys a simple script to utilize right now that you can start calling people because right now we're in weird times. People are feeling um, you know, different, indifferent about the real estate market right now. So I suggest that you guys call everybody that you know, and if you've been in the business for a bit, you can contact past clients and everything else. But this is anybody and everybody you know and utilize a simple script as follows. Just call and say, hey, it's Steve Derry. I'm reaching out because I'm getting more and more calls with questions pertaining to the real estate market and just how crazy things are. And I just wanted to reach out to see if you had any questions that I can help answer. Now, that's just going to open up dialogue for you guys. And I think that a lot of people have a lot of questions right now. And this is irrelevant if they own real estate or they are renting real estate. A lot of people want to know what's going on. And I suggest that you guys back it up in your local market with uh, your current MLS statistics. So... Um, you know, make sure you have that information at hand, maybe over the last 12 months, the projection of where things have gone. Now, um, you can answer a lot of different questions and a lot of people have a lot of different questions. So um, I think it's just an open-ended question to really get the conversation started and really develop that relationship with these people as you are the go-to source for real estate advice in your local market. The next thing is, 
contacting tenants and I'm going to show you in MLS right now how you can reach out to tenants that basically have uh, rented about eight to ten months ago so you can reach out to these tenants by mail you can even knock on their doors all right now I'm going to show you real quick in our local MLS I'll do a screen share here for you guys and it's real simple to really find out and narrow in and look the, the real estate agent that put these people in place, if they are represented by a real estate agent, odds are they're not following up with tenants that they put into place. So this is just fair grounds for you guys to go and market to. So I'm gonna go down to residential rental. I'm gonna click rented, and I'm gonna click the last 240 to 300 days. So basically 240 to 300 days ago, they actually rented this property and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna click in annual rental, and as you guys can see, there's 1,000, basically 1,100 matches. So what I would do with those matches, they give you the exact address of the properties they rented, so you know that those properties actually rented to a tenant, so you can go and knock on those doors, or you can send out a mail campaign. Now, when you're reaching out to these tenants, they might be inclined to rent another property, maybe not that property, so they might be inclined to rent another property that you can help them out with if maybe their credit is not the best and they don't necessarily have a down payment for purchase. But again, you're creating these relationships as you being the go-to source for these people. And eventually, if maybe they need to rent another place for another year, they're building their credit, you can basically consult with them throughout that uh, next 12 months and you're, you're gonna basically assist them after that 12 months in terms of getting a loan and pre-approved and then eventually buying something or in best case scenario, these people at the end of their current lease, um, they're gonna be looking to maybe purchase and then you might be that go-to person to actually find them a property. The next thing are real estate seminars. We've done these in the past. Um, we successfully did these when the real estate market uh, crashed and we were hosting uh, short sale seminars. So we are basically plastering it everywhere. Do not foreclose, consider a short sale. And we are trying to do these at least twice a month and it did draw in a lot of people. We got listings from it, and uh, it, it just it worked out extremely well. But there are so many different real estate seminars that you guys could do. Some would be first-time home buyers. I mean, think about how many first-time home buyers are out there in the market, and they really don't know what they're doing. So you guys could just have a short, you know, 15-minute spiel of you know, common questions and then open it up to the crowd of anybody else that has any questions. Look, I know some of you guys are also in uh, virtual offices, so it's pretty simple to rent, you know, go to um, some of these uh, executive suite offices and they actually have um, conference rooms that you can rent out very cheap. Uh, you can work something out with hotels as well. A lot of hotels have been hurt with the pandemic and everything, so you guys can rent some of these rooms out as well and keep your cost as low as possible. If you have a brick and mortar with your brokerage, uh, hopefully you guys can use a conference room there as well. You don't need anything crazy big. A lot of times the groups are pretty small, but it's just the consistency and you can advertise it for free on your own real estate pages um, on Facebook or, or other social media platforms. Some other ideas for you guys, um, you can talk about real estate investing. You can talk about 1031 exchanges. We've done those in the past where we brought in a local company here called Midland IRA where um, they talked about 1031 exchanges. Uh, we also had them come in to talk about how you can buy real estate and invest in real estate with your retirement account. So the sky's the limit in terms of these seminars that you could do. And I would suggest if you could do you know, one a week or two a month, you guys will draw in the traffic. And again, it's relationship building. So sometimes you know, you're not gonna see immediate success with people that you're meeting, but you become their source, their real estate source, and develop that relationship. And guess what? Because you provided value to them, they're gonna refer you to other people as well. And open houses, look, especially if you're slow right now and you're working from home or the office, don't do that. Get into open houses, get into open houses that have high traffic, where you're gonna draw in activity, you're gonna draw in people, and look, 
Things are probably gonna be slow at certain open houses during certain times, I get it, but this is the time that you can be building on your business. As previously mentioned, starting a YouTube channel. In every open house, you could do a five minute clip on some of the things that we talked about and launch those videos going out or do live feeds on Facebook and, and talking about you know the different property types that you guys are in or whatever the case is. So be sure that you guys are doing open houses. If you're new in real estate, when I was brand new in real estate, I literally was sitting in a model home uh, that we had exclusive rights for a builder and we were sitting in there six to seven days a week and we just were, were relentless about it. We took care of a lot of our business while we're sitting in these open houses, but we drew in a lot of traffic and we made a lot of real estate sales because of it. So if you're sitting at home right now, you guys are doing a disservice to your business. Well, I appreciate you guys being here. If you guys got any value out of this, I appreciate you sharing this or tagging maybe some other real estate agents that could utilize this information and help grow their business as well because we're all about sharing information and helping other real estate agents in the business. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot.